All right, so let's get into our first topic, the Chucky TV series. So uh, Chucky um, is on TV now. The you know horror icon himself, um, you know, with the franchise. Nick here has seen most of the movies. I've just seen just the first one myself. Mm. Um, so I've never really seen the sequels of the Chucky movies. Um, so this is, you know, continuing the canon of the Chucky movie. So if you're a person who's been following all the different stuff, um, all the, you know, uh, lore of Chucky, it kind of keeps up with those. Mm -hmm. Yes, it absolutely keeps up with the, with all of the lore that's set up in Chucky. And I think something that's kind of unique about this entire franchise is no matter what weird or just oddball turns that Don Mancini, uh, takes with this series... All of it is still in canon, mm. so he's he's not one to retcon anything that he's that he did before that wasn't uh, looked on so fondly. Stuff like uh, in a seed or a bride of Chucky, all mm. that still happened. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of returning characters from those past movies that come and make an appearance here. When we'll, we'll get into those, talk about those characters. Um, the big, you know, big thing about this show is, um, it has the original creative team from the Chucky movies come and do it, you know, and the original performer of Chucky and Brad Dorf, uh, who's Charles Lee Ray, who turn, gets turned into the, you know, Chucky doll. Um, and, you know, with this story here, it's all about Chucky basically trying to corrupt another child, uh, and, you know, kind of create absolute destruction and dissension mm. with everybody in this town uh which is you know a lot of fun to watch i'll say that like brad dorf <laughs> who is returning um you know as chucky it hasn't missed a beat picking up right where he left off um i think he's you know really great and really fun and has some really great lines here that are that are very funny uh yeah this is this is kind of what i think this show is it's pretty much uh Kind of like the greatest hits of Chucky. There's like a lot of references and callbacks to the previous movies. Uh, you get characters returning much like uh, uh, the original uh, actor for who played Andy in the first movie. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, his uh, foster sister from uh, Child's Play 2. Uh, you have uh, Jennifer Tilly back as uh, Tiffany in, in both the, the doll and uh, as Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. And uh, Fiona Dorif, who was the protagonist of... Uh, a curse and cult who's now uh, been possessed by Chucky. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so the lead here with this show um, is Zachary Arthur. He plays Jake Wheeler. Um, you know, he ends up kind of being uh, in a situation where he has to go with his, uh, you know, uncle who's, you know, his father's brother who ends up getting killed by Chucky, which is like one of the first big kills of the series. Um, his father, we talked about in the, you know, the premiere uh, when we reviewed it, you know, yeah, yeah. His father was an abusive alcoholic, and then uh, his uh, and then his uh, uncle, his uh, his father's twin, who's also played by uh, Devin Sawa. Mm, yeah. Um, so he ends up living with them after you know Chucky kills you know his his uh, you know his father. Um, and I like how they do you know go all the way in you know the character being gay because they announced the character was going to mm -hmm. be gay um, before the show started, and they they pay you know into that you know and it's not just a thing yeah they they don't they don't dance around it it's right away a something that's addressed yeah um and you know he gets into a relationship um you know he kisses another you know young man in the show so you know they they actually do it they don't do like disney it's like hey we got our first openly gay character and it's like you know they, they... <laughs> yeah we get like three first openly gay characters in in like uh 20 years yeah, you know what I mean. So they they so I do respect them for doing that. They just didn't say like, yeah, he's gay, but then they don't actually show it in the show. So I do kind of you know. Yeah, it, it, it's that. it's kind of weird that uh, out of like all popular media, Chucky ends up being the most pro LGBTQ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because <laughs> because there there's a line in I think the second episode where it's like, yeah, and you're gay, and the kid is just asking Chucky is like, yeah, I got a queer kid. Yeah, he's like gender fluid. Calling yeah. back to uh, Seed of Chucky, he's like, "Jake, I'm not a monster." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, 
You know, so that, 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 you know, I mean, he may be a lot of things. He may be a murderous he's psychopath. He's a serial killer, but he, but he's uh, waving that pride flag. Yeah, he's, he's not homophobic, you know what he, I mean? At least he's he, not homophobic. He's, a, he's still a serial killer, but he's at least an ally. Yeah, you know, so good for him, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I would say, you know, I get that, you know, these Chucky series, you know, it's not known for its acting. Um I will say a lot of these, mm-hmm. you know, because it mostly focuses on high schoolers and kid actors here, um, you know, and I think some of them are decent. Um, I mm-hmm. think Jake Willer, I mean, sometimes he kind of has one kind of mode throughout the show, um, you know what I mean? Like kind of breathing in heavy and, you know, kind of shocked face, you know, um, you know, to look distressed or angry or upset um you know because that's kind of like his seems like his one kind of emotion throughout it um and you know you have another character here like uh who plays like the the bitchy mean girl lexi cross we talked about her. oh was like yeah alvia allen lynch she takes a turn after like the first couple episodes where it comes to a point where you know what chucky go get her yeah you know what i mean and so eventually like it's like some of the people he yeah, does it, go it, after. It's less. Rude. It's less mean girl. It's it's just pure evil. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah, she's kind of almost like you think it's okay. She's just as big of a psycho. It's like she needs to go. But then eventually, as the series kind of goes on, you know, things develop and and things kind of change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, things develop. Uh, her character goes through goes through a change, and much like we talked about Cobra Kai, she ended up being uh, one of my favorite characters in the show. Mm, yeah um she has a sister who uh also kind of makes more appearances um you know more of a presence throughout the show uh carolyn uh caroline is her sister um i was getting the kind of they she was more of a character who was autistic maybe somebody on the spectrum is what i was kind of it's 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 very hinted at and that's kind of uh pretty much the type that chucky ends up preying on uh as uh as the child's play movies have kind of gone on Mm, okay um then you have her our may uh mayor mother michelle um who's basically like kind of like a mayor quimby of this little small town <laughs> um you know very ineffectual uh you know can't really do a job well um is absolutely you know because a lot of the theme common themes with a lot of these kids is that they have kind of terrible parents like either one of their parents mm. are pretty terrible the only person who had like a a pretty good decent good parent was devon um, you know, his mom, uh, the, who was the detective investigating the crimes of all these different murders that were going on in town mm-hmm. of, uh, Hackensack. Um, and, um, she seems semi-decent, you know what I mean? Um, in the show and everything like that. Um, yeah, we're not, we don't see her outright, uh, like abusing or gaslighting her, her child. Yeah, because there's different situations that happens with the different parents. Like the, mm-hmm. you know, the uncle character, um, who's the father of Junior Willer, um, you know, he's very living vicariously through his son, pressuring his son to be this star athlete and, you know, really, you know, making him live his, you know, not really what he wants to do and seems like what the father mainly wants to do. Um, in the situation with um, Lexi Cross and her parents, you know, her father's cool, but her mother's is absolutely cruel to her uh treats her incredibly poorly you know talks down to her um really just only you know coddles the caroline child uh as opposed Mm -hmm. to her um and just like with jake really we had the abusive father who you know hated the fact that you know he was gay and you know hated the fact that he was this you know artist and wanted him to be you know quote unquote normal um so you do kind of have a lot of those kind of common themes in the show that um i think of kind of the bad parenting going on um, what did you kind of think about the different parents throughout the uh, show? Uh, I, I think I think uh, that's kind of a common theme throughout the Child's Play movies. It, it is that uh, these kids are so uh, abused and so neglected. They end up getting seduced by Chucky, by, by the doll. And mm. that was kind of a common theme in, uh, in the latter uh, original Child's Play sequels with uh, 2 and 3. Well, Andy, he's going into foster care and then uh, military school where he has crappy home situation and that just leads to chucky continuing to fuck with him mm, yeah uh what do you think about the acting in the show uh i think for the most part i i think uh i think zachary arthur i think he's he's fine he wasn't blowing me away uh i liked uh uh alv 
Olivia Allen Lind as a Lexi. I thought she was pretty good. But for me, the real standout towards the latter, towards the last few episodes was uh, Teo Briones, who plays a junior as is uh, Jake's cousin. He was the one that really stood out to me towards the towards the end of the season out of the young actors. Uh, Brad Dorif, he's always great. So is uh, Jennifer Tilly. And so is Fiona Dorif, who was one of the best parts about uh, Curse and Cult of Chucky. And there's a very weird term because there are flashbacks to uh, the life of Charles Lee Ray. And for a lot of the episodes, Fiona Dorif plays the young Charles, which is an incredible makeup job. Oh, that was her. Oh, okay. Yeah, that yeah, that was her. That's actually uh, Brad Dorif's daughter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So she plays the uh, the you know, when they do the flashbacks, and she's the young version. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, and it is a little it is a little bit weird because they also dub uh, uh, Brad Dorif's voice over uh, his daughter's performance, and the same with uh, the young actor, the actor for a uh, young Jennifer Tilly. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought that was a little weird. I thought that was kind of unnecessary. Uh, them kind of dubbing the voices over when they do the flashbacks because mm. they show the origin of Charlie's Ray and how he becomes the killer he becomes, and it shows different, you know, at points in his life they do these big ten year uh, like uh, jumps. Like at first it starts off in like the what was it the the sixties, and then it jumps in the seventies, yeah. then it jumps to the eighties. Um, so these different time jumps, and then, you know, when he goes to the 80s, that's when he meets the Jennifer Tilly character, um, and, um, I thought that was weird that they, you can clearly tell it is dubbed over, so I thought that was kind of <laughs> weird that they just decided to do that, uh, because when Fiona Dorf, when she, I, 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 I mean, I mean, it's not weird on the level of, like, the opening of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. I think it's about the same level. I think it's. I think in terms of quality, it's about the same level. Yeah, uh, I, I thought it worked here uh, because because Chucky is such an iconic character. It it would be weird if uh, we're hearing somebody else's voice coming from it. But so was that also the, like Brad Dorf dubbing over the voice when when uh, the character of Pierce, uh, where she's like, because it's a situation where he's split his. Soul. Oh, oh no no! In present day with uh, Nika. Uh, that's all Fiona. So I thought that's she did, all Fiona Dora. I thought she did a good job impersonating him when when they do the whole back and forth between her character and then when she's in Chucky because it's a situation where Chucky has basically did like a Voldemort thing where he can split his soul off into different objects. You know, like what Voldemort did with the Horcruxes, so it makes him you know mm-hmm. uh, you know, almost impossible to kill. And he's he's in the body of Nika Pierce, and because they're both inhabiting the same body, they go back and forth. And so when there's moments when Nika Pierce is in control and then they flip back when she's Chucky. And I felt like she did a good job at, at, at doing uh, Brad Dorf. I felt like she did a good job with the voice and the characteristics. You know what I mean? Like when they do the flashbacks in the 80s and they show like how he moved and talked. It's like, you know, I think she kind of imitated that very well. Um, yeah, she, she nails Brad Dorf's mannerisms as Charles Lee Ray. Yeah, so I thought that I don't know why you couldn't just keep it that way. Um, yeah, so I that, that yeah. Uh, so when they do this, I didn't know that. So yeah, when they do the flashbacks, um, yeah, it does look pretty good. Um, it just reminded me a lot of Tommy Wiseau. Is that so he looked like a lot of just, <laughs> uh, like yeah, yeah, very good that. Um, yeah, but but then again, Brad Dorf did kind of look like uh, Tommy Wiseau back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was yeah, I thought that was pretty spot on. Um, and do you know the actress who played uh, Jennifer Tilly's? Uh, other version there in the 80s oh the young jennifer tilly i'm looking at the cast list right now uh uh yeah. that was uh that was a uh, blaze crocker who played the young tiffany valentine yeah um with her uh yeah i i thought like i thought it was weird the whole voice change thing i don't know why they just didn't start off with the the voice but then they they did a whole thing where they tried to do an origin of the voice, which I thought... Yeah, there, it was like a, a little bait and switch with the character. Because you think that uh, sh- uh, Charles is hooking up with the young Jennifer Tilly, and then, what a twist! Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so if she always had that voice, then... What, so wouldn't it, wouldn't it be the thing with Jennifer Tilly? Because Jennifer Tilly is known for having that squeaky voice. So it's like mm-hmm. this other woman had the same squeaky voice? Or... <laughs> uh mm-hmm. okay yeah because i thought the only reason she <laughs> uh. yeah, 
Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I thought I thought that was kind of a little pointless. Um, and then I think um, some some other stuff a little with the show. It's like you can clearly tell when it's the you know like the doll as far as the puppeteer goes, and then with the puppet, mm. and then when it switches to like a person because it's two times size bigger. So when it you know when the, <laughs> when the character's running around trying to do stuff, it's like okay, clearly this is a person in the in the costume. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, but those are those are common things in the original movie. Like there's like. I think there's like a super cut of of uh, of scenes in Child's Play where you could clearly tell it's a it's a fully grown stunt man <laughs> instead of the doll. Yeah, so I, I mean, this situation you can clearly kind of tell that, uh, but you know, I still th- it doesn't ruin the immersion too much. It's just funny little mm. things that you see happen. Um, and the fact, yeah, and it, and and like a lot of the a lot of the jokes in this, they're played for laughs, which I think is kind of the saving grace of it. Mm, yeah um and the humor i think works um you know in in the show and i think it is it is funny at times um and but also with the with the kills i think the kills also work you know this being a horror show Mm. it's like well what about the stabbing what about the kills i think they're very effective you know and there's some good kills here um the brutality is there for sure um you know i mean there's i mean where people you know slip on knives and necks get twisted around and I mean, there's some really a lot of, you know, of course, good old stabbings, you know. I mean, there's a lot of very mm-hmm. brutal stuff. What did you think about the horror in the show? The horror? I think it it's it's on par with some of the best of the franchise yet. Uh, uh, Curse of Chucky it was more of a slow burn, which it was a little bit disappointing. But uh, Cult went full on uh, Child's Play Greatest Hits. And I feel like uh, with the kills here... Uh, it's giving Don Mancini a chance to get more creative with the longer format. Mm, okay. Um, and nothing but the show is so. Like you talked about, they bring in a lot of the characters from the movies. Do you think mm. they're they brought in too many characters for this first season instead of maybe teasing a little bit more, like how Cobra Kai does? How you know it starts mm. off with you know more of the major characters you know, like with Chucky, and then with these new cast of characters. But then maybe it's like oh, teasing next season. Maybe Jennifer Tilly's gonna come. And then maybe this other character is going to come. And then, you know, do you think they put too many of the other past characters and kind of overstuff this season, it being only eight episodes? Uh, I think it, I think for the most part it works, but mostly because I think uh, when uh, they announced, when Sci Fi and USA announced the show, there was no possible indication that they were going to get a second season. Mm. So it, it's so much like uh, Mancini's other work, it, it's like, okay, we got to go for broke. We got to write this like this is the last time we're ever going to get to do anything with Chucky. Mm, okay. Um, and, and thankfully the show got uh, remo- renewed uh, and it's uh, coming out uh, this year. Yeah, it's getting the second season. That's confirmed. Um, yeah, I did like Jennifer Tilly coming back. I thought she was probably, her and Brad Dorf were the best, uh, I think, in the series by far. Um, I think, you know, as far as you talk about other returning characters, um, Andy, who was from the very first movie, um, who, uh, is played by, uh, uh, Alex, uh, what's his name? Alex, uh, I forgot his... Oh, Alex Vincent, who played, uh, Andy Barkley in the original, uh, in the original Chucky, and it's continuing his arc from, uh, the last two sequels, where he's, like, made it his mission to hunt down all the good guy dolls. Yeah, um... I thought, you know, he was by far the worst actor in the show. Um, I thought, you know, his line delivery was pretty terrible, pretty poor. Um, he he didn't really grow up to be that good of an actor. Andy, did, yeah, he, <laughs> he, did, he didn't grow up. Um, you know, it, it's not a situation like with uh, Henry Thomas, who was a little kid from E.T. You know, he grew up to be a, a pretty decent actor. Um, n- not the case here. Um, and I think that... Maybe it's because she looks better when she's acting next to him, but the actress who played his, like you said, his, what, his sister, his foster sister? Oh, yeah, his foster sister, uh, Christine Elise. So she's a little bit better, maybe, compared, because she's with him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, th- I thought I thought he was by far the worst. I think anytime they cut to him, <laughs> I thought it was like, wow, this is just dragging these scenes down. It's like, is you know, it's like, do you want to do another take of that or what? Uh, what, what did you think about... <laughs> um andy and his foster sister coming back yeah i i I think they were probably uh on paper that was like one of the cool things continuing on with that uh with that through line through cult of chucky but i think that they're 
just not that good of an act. He's not that good of an actor. Mm, yeah. Uh, but again, I mean, this series is not known for, you know, strong acting or anything like that, really, and, you know, Oscar winning performances. Uh, but so I. Yeah, the, yeah the, make no mistake. This show is not going to get any, like, love at, uh, during award season. But let's just get that right out of the way. Yeah. Uh, but it was fun seeing them, you know, hunt down all these different, you know, Chunky Dolls. Because, you know, that's what you say. He's made it. They both made it their mission to hunt down these different, you know, good guy dolls and Chunky Dolls and kill them and everything like that. Um, so it's kind of like in an element of, like, um, the character from the Friday 13th series. Like, he was like, okay, I, to, 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 you know, who's played by, um, I forgot what was his name. Uh, from Friday 13th and, hmm. The, I think it was Haim. I think it was Corey Haim or Corey Feldman who was in... Oh, oh, right. It was it was Corey Feldman in, uh, like, Friday 5, I think. Yeah, yeah, Corey Feldman there. Um, so kind of similar to something like that. Um, so I thought that was I thought that was pretty nice. I thought that was a pretty cool introduction there. Um, and I like the whole stuff of, like, the threat becoming a little bit more bigger with Chucky, splitting off the souls. I like the whole thing where his, you know, two souls are occupying the one body... With the uh, uh, Nika Pierce character, even though I don't know why, it because when he's in control of her body, all of a sudden she's not a paraplegic anymore. I don't know. It, it's uh, it's it's voodoo magic. Okay, yeah, I guess I guess you can just explain away with that. Uh, but yeah, all of a sudden he's in control. Yeah, she's yeah, the, the yeah, the deity that he's like uh, praying to every time he does that ritual. I guess it really that God really likes to fuck with him. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, so I, uh, so I guess you could just say, like, well, that's just the voodoo, that's just the magic, I guess, yeah, sure, you know, that he can walk all of a sudden when he's in her body, um, and, uh, so I, yeah, I thought that was good, I thought that, Ale uh, you know, th that was a cool element they brought in here, is that something they brought in too early, on, uh, elsewhere in the movies, or is this brand Yeah, new? that, that was, yeah, that was in the third act of, uh, of Cult of Chucky, when, uh, when, uh, Chucky finally, uh, possesses Nika's body, and then, uh, she stands up. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I thought that was good. What are some of the best elements you thought of this series? Uh, some of the best elements, I think the kills are as good as they've ever been in the franchise. Uh, the puppeteering and the effects of Chucky, they're the best. It's the best it's ever looked. I think uh, the performances from at least the top four, the top four of the kid actors, uh, uh, Zachary Arthur, Taylor Brionis, uh, Al... Olivia Allen Lind and uh, Jorgen uh, Arnensen, who plays uh, Devin. I think they're, for the most part, pretty good. I liked uh, uh, the development of the character of Lexi. I think uh, Teo, Teo Briones, he's kind of the standout of the last like two or two or three episodes. Brad Dorff, he's at his best as uh, the character Chucky. Uh, I think some of the adult actors, I think they're fine. Uh, you get... Uh, TV stables like Alexa Doig, who played uh, Talia in Arrow. You had Devin Sawa in this. He's fine. And I think uh, the kills, they're some of the best in the franchise. I, oh. I had a great time watching this. Oh, she was Talia. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Oh, yeah, she yeah. played Talia Al Ghul in Arrow. Yeah. Oh, and she was Talia? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and she was, also in, she was also in Jason X. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, oh, I forgot about that, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but also with a lot of these kills that Chucky's committing, it's like, seems like, seems like some of these kills would be caught on camera, like when he kills Junior's mother, who's, who used to be Talia al Ghul, um, it seems like that would be, like, he's doing it in this big office, it seems like that would be caught on camera, but okay, uh, but, but yeah, the, the, sh the kills in this, there is some suspension of disbelief. Yeah, you know, because he, like, rolls a cart, and I guess, even though, I mean, how strong is he to roll this cart that's strong enough to knock her out the window? It's really, it's really inconsistent. I think, it, like, some movies, it's like, yeah, he's a doll, but he's got the strength of a grown man, and sometimes he's literally just a doll. Yeah, because, uh, like, when he fights Jake, it's like, you know, he's like, okay, I got all this power, I got all this strength, he's got to really struggle to, to fight him off, and he's got this knife... Uh, but then he can just step on him, and then he's like, okay, he's fine now. Uh, yeah, he can just stroke. Which like... is something that is in uh, one of the latter movies. Oh, okay. Um, so it's like, yeah, he can just step on him, and it's no problem. 
Uh, even like he's struggling to even kill Lexi. You know what I mean? He got the he got them little ass legs that be kicking. You know, he's he trying to wrap his you know chain around a neck, and he's just struggling. kicking, which is funny as hell. I always like when he tries to strangle people because them little legs just be kicking. Um, <laughs> And then, um, you know, and then Jake, uh, that was also a great scene, too, when he strangles the shit. He literally strangles the shit out of him. Like, literally, <laughs> eye- eyeballs popping out that, of everything. That was cathartic. Yeah, that was some, that was cathartic. Yeah, he just, of that. Yeah, takes him, because Jake takes a lot of abuse in this series. He gets punched by mm-hmm. all these different people, gets hit, you know what I mean? Gets, you know what I mean? He just finally let all that rage out, just choke the shit out that doll, you know what I mean? Until his <laughs> eyes pop out and blood all gushes out. Um, and with so... Because I, if I remember correctly, with Child's Play, I think when they when when he got shot or blown up, it was just like it wasn't blood or guts that came out. It was always it was like the the doll itself, right? It was like yeah, I I think uh, that's some of the lore. It's like the longer uh, Chucky stays in the doll, the more like flesh and blood he becomes. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I was like, yeah, I was trying to remember from the the first movie. It was like, yeah, because I remember like all this blood and guts coming out with the doll. So the long he stays in the doll, then the more he becomes human and everything like that. So it's easier to kill him, you know, when he stays in the doll. Um, so, you, you know, I like you said, I do agree with you on some of the elements there. You know how good the show is, like Jennifer Tilly, Brad Dwarf. I thought the kills were very good. Um, you know, the adult, you know, kind of actor kind of performances here, uh, or just generally across the board, um, are not that good. You know, they're not that very strong. Mm. Um, uh, but I, I think they're maybe decent enough for you know what you're kind of expecting for this show possibly. Um, I do like the kids when they you know eventually get together and they try to fight Chucky. Um, you know I think you know that's a pretty good element of you know seeing Lexi and then Jake and then uh, the Devin characters seeing them team up uh, to to combat him. Um, and yeah, um, I thought it was. As a season as a whole, I mean, for someone like me who, like I said, I've only ever really seen the first uh, Chucky movie, which is Child's Play, mm-hmm. um, you know, which uh, black people, when you talk about the first Chucky movie, we just say Chucky. It's just, you know what I mean? We don't say Child's <laughs> Play, just Child's Play, just Chucky. Um, yeah, I thought it was a solid season. You know, you got a lot more history with this stuff, you know, seeing most of the movies and then especially, you. I think it's important to see the, the, the last couple of movies, see the Chucky um, and Cult of Chucky in order to really maybe more appreciate this. So if you are a person who's followed Chucky all the way up until those movies, I think you'll have a bigger appreciation for this TV series. Uh, but yeah, I still... the, show, the show is very much a love letter to fans of the franchise, people that have kind of been there since the day one. Yeah, so I think if you know, you're a person like that, then I think you would get a lot more out of it. Um, but I still thought for someone like me who you know really just never really followed it much after the first one, I still think it's pretty decent as a show. I wouldn't say great or anything like that. Um, I think that the episode length of these shows, because I watched it, I watched it on Peacock, um, so including mm. the commercials and everything like that. So these are you know nice chunky episodes, like about an hour long um, each episode. I'm wondering if that's good good length for these episodes. I'm wondering if maybe it would be better if they trimmed it down or something. But I think you know fine maybe for the the amount of time they do. Um, but yeah, I'd give it a stream it. I, I would say for, for mm-hmm. me. Uh, what about you? The, I had an absolute blast with the show. I think the kills, the sense of humor, I think it all works wonderfully. I'm a huge fan of uh, Don Mancini and the and the Chucky films. Uh, I give this a very strong tune-in, especially mm-hmm. towards the end where they kind of do like a little parody of uh, Dead Meat and the Kill Count at the very last episode, Yeah, which I which made me laugh really hard. Yeah, I thought that was yeah, I thought that was yeah, pretty good. They do a whole kill count at the end and show all the best kills and everything. They collected all the kills in the series. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, um, and it does leave it open ended, you know, for a second season, um, and everything like that. So I guess the her, his stepsister, she's dead, I guess, right? Or is she maybe still alive? Maybe. I don't know. It's left ambiguous. Mm, okay, well, possibly. Um, yeah, uh, I like maybe like to see her come back. Yeah, um, it, have somebody you know he can try to act against, you know what I mean? It's not just him, 